Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Lately on this channel, I've been looking at higher and higher radio frequencies, microwaves, L-band, S-band, X-band. I've been getting way up there, high frequencies, looking at satellite stuff, looking at radio astronomy. And I figured, why don't we take a step back and look at some lower frequency stuff for a minute. Now, normally I really like the RTL SDR Blog V3 software defined radio. That's the little silver USB dongle that I've been using for most of my radio experiments. However, recently a viewer to the channel, Eric Hahn, sent me a new Alec uh, NESDR Smart T or Nestor Smart, whatever, I don't know how you pronounce that, but an alternate software defined radio. I've heard these, I've never actually tried one, so let's give it a shot. Eric also sent me the Ham It Up, um, also from New Alec, and this is an up converter that lets us use the lower range of the radio spectrum. Normally, a lot of these SDRs kind of bottom out around 27 to 30 megahertz, and while that gives us a lot of frequencies we can listen to for modern stuff, it eliminates a whole bunch of legacy historic radio frequencies like CB, HF, shortwave, AM radio, all the stuff that used to be considered mainstream radio a hundred years ago that's now kind of the forgotten zone on the radio spectrum. However, there are still people using 30 megahertz and under. It's still popular with radio amateurs, still popular with CB radio people and CB pirates. There are still shortwave and AM broadcast stations. And then there's some weird military stuff down in the very low frequencies. Anyway, I'm rambling a little bit. What the ham it up uh, up converter does is take frequencies lower than 30 megahertz and boost them up by about 150 megahertz. So that opens up a whole new range of frequencies that we can listen to with our software defined radio and see what's out there. Now I also have the smaller version down here, the Hammond Up Nano. I actually coincidentally bought that uh, right around the same time that Eric sent me this stuff because I wanted to try it out. So now we've got two different versions we can try and maybe compare them a little bit and see what we think. Now I used to listen to shortwave radio when I was a kid. I haven't listened to it much these days, but I kind of remember it worked best at night and it worked best with just a random piece of wire thrown out the window as the antenna. I went online to see if there are any best practice for shortwave antennas and it seems like that is the best practice. Just take a random length of wire, get it up as high as you can and connect it to your radio. So I dug through the garage and I found a random length of wire which is in a horrible tangle. I think this yellow coil here is maybe about 100 feet of contiguous wire, but I've got to separate out the blue and the black and all the other stuff that's migrated into this mess of spaghetti. Now I just need to get this wire up a tree. I don't know the best way to do that, but I do know the fun way. So my wire goes all the way up and over the house, and since the cats keep poking holes in the screen, I think there's probably a hole big enough to snake the wire in this way. Well, Donnie is determined to help with every stage of this process, and now Fluff says she has to help with this project. All right, I'm pretty sure this is a legitimate apt package for a cat on keyboard. Now, apparently one thing that the NESDR, or at least this version, lacks is a bias T. That's the part of a software-defined radio that provides DC power out through the antenna wire to run external accessories like our Hammett up here. Now fortunately both of these have external USB power options. This one uses the really old printer cable, but I never throw a cable away, so fortunately I have an antique USB cable that'll fit that. So now our Hammett up up converter has power. We have the RF end hooked to that long wire that goes over the house. We have the other end hooked to the SDR, so the SDR will see things up in a higher range than it's supposed to be, unless I go into the software here and choose the offset mode and it looks like there's already an option for ham it up. So that tells our software that everything is being up converted. And we'll go ahead and turn that on over here. So now we've got ye old AM radio. Peter Fairley actually clued me in that you can play about five seconds of music without YouTube cutting monetization. So if I play any of these stations and they've got music, I won't play them for very long. I don't know what that was. It was really distorted, though. That's kind of how I remember AM radio. That's why nobody really listens to it anymore. It goes farther, but it sounds terrible. Yeah. 
Well, I'm seeing some kind of weird things happening around 23 megahertz. Not quite sure what I'm seeing. All right, we have quite a bit of activity in CB, or Citizens Band. I remember this from when I was a kid, too. Uh, back then, it was used for legitimate communication between houses and boats and cars and whatnot. Nowadays, it seems like it's for folks who are a little too amateur for amateur radio, but still want to talk a little farther than those Walmart bubble pack radios will go. Back when I lived in Alaska, sometimes we could hear folks in Hawaii and Australia and all over the place if the atmospheric conditions were just right. All right, well, CB is just as full of weird random nonsense as I remember, so yeah, that's entertaining. Now when we get really low, down between about 3 and 30 kilohertz, we get stuff like submarine communications. These are sent out at such a low frequency that they'll actually penetrate through water. Now the bandwidth is extremely low, so these have to be very simple, very short messages. Stuff like, hey, surface to receive a longer message, or stay hidden, or launch the nukes now. Very simple messages like that. I obviously can't tell what they're actually saying because it's all encrypted. Here we have one of the National Institute of Standards uh, time broadcasts. Now that the sun's gone down, we're actually getting quite a few more signals. So the spectrum really cleared up at night, and I had a lot easier time listening to things like the WWV time signal, uh, various shortwave stations, AM stations. I noticed that a lot of the traffic declined overnight, which I suppose makes sense in the U.S. Everybody's going to bed. All the CB people went to bed and gave up for the night. I did still hear a few ham radio people here and there. So one thing that helped me understand what I'm seeing here is a custom band plan for STR++. And this replaces the little labels that you see right under the frequency display on the top. A few months ago, I actually got an email from Aaron, KN1E, and he's actually doing a bunch of custom band plans, and he directed me over to GitHub, where you can download those for STR Sharp, STR++. Now, I had to jump through a couple of hoops to get these installed on STR++. The installation instructions are in that GitHub link. I'll put that down below. This weather facts thing is something people keep mentioning to me. It's something I want to try, and now that we have the ham it up, we can probably play around with this at some point in the future. So some of those weird data signals I was seeing before are radio teletype, or RTTY. I think that's another digital mode of ham radio similar to packet, although, again, I'm going to have to do more research on this. All right, well, it's daytime, so the CB guys are awake again, and there's just as much nonsense on the CB channels as I expected. San Francisco on the side of the road. I don't even know what some of these signals are. There's this weird little thing that keeps dashing back and forth across the screen. Hey, 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 when you said uh, one, two, three, and four with uh, Mr. Audio, I was trying to key every time and talk some shiggity, but you couldn't hear me there for it then. My name is Tom Wood. I'm a Lakita over here in Naples, Florida. I just want to say good afternoon to you to your family. Yeah, the CB guys are almost more entertaining than the hams because they're using just illegal amounts of power from all over the U.S. I'm hearing people from Florida, people from California. They're not necessarily PG rated, uh, they're not necessarily FCC approved, but they sure are fun to listen to. I'm also getting a lot more Morse code activity, especially on the 10 meter ham band. That's really close to CB, and I know some of the CB pirates like to sneak onto that band as well. <laughs> This 12 meter ham band seems pretty active today too. A lot of the uh, Morse code signals are concentrated in one little area, and it's actually kind of hard for me to discriminate between them with this SDR. Okay, so we've been getting a ton of stuff with that old Hammond Up, the full-size version. Let's try this little guy next. So we'll cut over to a screenshot of 12 meter ham band. That's what that looks like right now with the full-size Hammond Up. And now we're going to switch over to the Hammond Up Nano and see what things look like there. Let's go look at another band. Let's look at CB and see what goes on over there if we switch between the Nano and then back to the older Hammond Up, which is this doesn't seem to be any different with one versus the other. I like the Nulek Ini SDR Smart, although, like I said, it doesn't have some of the features that the RTL SDR does, so I don't know if I'm going to use it quite as much as my regular old RTL SDR V3s. 
Now that reminds me, I actually just received in the mail the RTL SDR V4. Uh, went and bought this one on their official website. I think they're back in stock. They went out of stock for a while, but um, yeah, before we wrap up this video, let's swap this out and see how it compares to the new Elec version. Since the V4 is a new chipset, I have to download and build new drivers for it. I'll throw the link to the process for that down below in the description as well. Well, the RTL SDR seems to work at least as well as the new Elec, at least on Citizen's Band. It seems to me like the RTL SDR gets a stronger signal in these very low frequency ranges. Now, one downside of the RTL SDR is that it's a lot fatter. So if you are trying to run something else with USB and you only have a couple USB slots on your laptop, they do run into each other here. Now on the plus side, this guy has that built-in bias T, so you don't need an external USB to power your filters, your ham it up, up converters, etc. You can just run those directly off of the RTL SDR with its built-in bias T DC output. All right, let's wrap this video up. As I said, this wasn't exactly a review, but I do think a lot of the new Elec ham it up units. These are really cool. They definitely expand the range of your RTL SDR, and they bring up a whole world of relatively low frequency stuff that I had kind of forgotten existed. This is stuff I used to listen to as a kid with a shortwave radio, with a CB, with an AM radio, and that's stuff that you can't really pick up with your stock RTL SDR. And the Hammond Up units are great for that. They're great for bringing up all those very low frequency things, medium wave, long wave, short wave, and there's some really interesting stuff down there. I'm gonna definitely keep playing around with this. I'm gonna try this a little bit later at night again, see if I can get some of those really distant shortwave stations and see what happens with different atmospheric propagation with different antennas. I've got a whole bunch more stuff to add to my to-do list with this. If you want to find one of these for yourself, I will throw some links down in the description and that includes the new Elec unit and the RTL SDR unit. Thank you again to Eric for sending me his unwanted SDR stuff so I could play around with it. And thank you to Aaron for making this custom band plan that really helped me understand what I'm seeing in these lower frequencies. Again, that's a really cool resource and I'll link that down below. I hope this has been a fun video for everyone. Stay tuned for more radio nonsense, more DIY experiments, and then check out all my other videos for stuff like this along with other projects that I do. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.